Stepping Out of Your Comfort Zone and Living Boldly, interview with Patricia Brooks. Ever feel so afraid that you miss out on pursuing a life that you really want? Would you like to learn how to overcome fear and step out of your comfort zone and live boldly the life you love? Then you're in the right place. Give us thumbs up if you're interested in this topic. Welcome to Happy and Healthy Mind with Dr. Rosina, where you can learn tips for your mental fitness from my guests and me. If this is the first time you're joining us, my name is Dr. Rosina, and I am I specialize in treatment of stress, anxiety, and depression. Over the last 20 years, I have been serving as medical doctor, specializing in psychiatry, a best-selling author, and a transformative speaker. I started this program, Happy and Healthy Mind, because I truly believe that a lot of suffering could be prevented with simple mind training. So over here, we share practical tips for your mental fitness, so you don't have to suffer unnecessarily. The purpose of this program is educational and not treatment. So please consult your healthcare professional for specific advice. We stream these interviews live sat on Saturdays at 11 a.m. Pacific time on YouTube and Facebook. If you're joining us during the live program, please ask questions in the comment section and we will try our best to answer. And if you would like to get the text for reminders for future programs so you can ask these questions, then you can text the word joyful to the number 38470 and you'd be happy to send you those uh, reminders and resources link. Our mission is to bring health and happiness to more than a million people. So if you find value, please like, subscribe and share so more people could live a happier and healthier life. So let's dig in for today's topic. I'm really grateful for Patricia for joining us. She's a repeat guest. She is a health coach. She helps people build courage and host a podcast called Discovering Courage. She's an author of two inspiring books and currently working on a third one. And uh, the most exciting thing in, in her life that has happened is in 2018, at the age of 51, she started a new journey following her own advice from her book. She'll probably tell us more about the story in, in the interview. So let me ask the audience this time, has there been ever a time in your life when you missed out an opportunity because you were too afraid? Enter yes or no in the comment section. So let's ask Patricia. Patricia, what kind of challenges were you facing when you became interested in this topic? Or how, well, this, I, how did this come uh, come in your life? The confidence and courage was something that started to be important in my life when I was at a job I was not liking. I had recently lost my father and I realized that I was simply going through the motions in life. I felt like I had been afforded a lot of opportunities, but I was wasting them. And part of the reason was because I was afraid. I was afraid to fail. I was afraid to try new things. I was very introverted. And so after the death of my dad, I made a decision to show up more fully. And in doing so, that created more confidence in me. It is kind of counterintuitive, but that's how it worked. So uh, what were you missing before you took this courageous step that we're going to talk about later? Well, I, I think what I was missing was I was on the, the sidelines of life. I, you know, had subscribed to the idea that, you know, you go to college, you get an education, you, you get a job, and then you work that job or several jobs until you retire and not really having taking time for yourself. And so I had gotten on that path and I was unhappy. I was, I was, as I said, going through the motions in life. And so what I was missing out on was living fully, was being able to see my potential and to work toward that potential, which is so freeing once you realize that you have the strength and power to do more than you ever believed you could. So what did you do? So what did I do? So what did I do? So initially, to the, the, what I did in order to build my confidence and courage was something that was in the background of my life that I was doing that I didn't know 
that I was doing. And in writing my book, Growing Bold, was when I unpacked what I had been doing in order to take these steps to do things that were really outside of my comfort zone. And so one of the first things I did was to set meaningful goals. When I say meaningful goals, those are goals that are tied to your core values, the things that are most important to you, so that you have a a real reason and a burning desire to pursue them even when you are experiencing challenges or you are afraid to move forward. And so that's what I did when I was in at this job that I was not happy with, I set this meaningful goal and the meaningful goal was to show up more fully. I was, I could see myself, you know, just going in and doing the, the, the minimum and the minimum was okay, right? Nobody complained about it, but I knew I could do more. And so I showed up more fully, I showed up 100%. And what was amazing was that that built my confidence because I was like, oh, I feel good about myself. I feel like I am not cheating anyone. And so that leads into the second catalyst for cultivating courage, which is building your self-confidence. And in some ways, you know, do, showing up more fully will help to build your confidence, but in, sometimes you don't have that belief in yourself. And that's when I would turn to past accomplishments that I had done and, did, and hadn't thought that I'd be able to achieve. We'd love to learn some of these tools that helped you, but first tell me how, what step you took and you know, how's your life different now since you have applied all those tools? Oh, okay. So my life is different now because I'm living in the South of France. My life is different now because I am an entrepreneur building uh, my business. My life is different now because I'm happy. <laughs> I mean, that's huge right there. So without having taken those steps, without having done the inner work to get to this place, I, I'm not really sure what my life would look like. It would not look like this. So you took this big, bold step of leaving a job and leaving the country and moving to a foreign country and establishing a totally new life because that's what you were feeling the call for. Yes. Yeah, so after I had this desire to move to, to France because, uh, because of the language, the language that was the draw. And I had always been told a bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. You don't quit a job without having another job at the ready. But there came a time after I was able to cope at work that I realized that coping would not work forever and that I needed to take this step. I needed to live my dream, uh, leave my job, move to France and see what that would hold for me. Wonderful. So what kind of challenges you faced when you made that decision? Well, making the decision to, to move abroad brought with it the, the challenge of not really believing that it was something that I could do, right? It was, it had been a dream, <laughs> but I'd never, I'd never moved, lived abroad before and I had barely traveled abroad. So the fact that I would do it by myself really created this self-doubt in me. But I was able to move through that. I did hire a coach to help me with that. Um, I was a project manager, so I put a plan in place that helped me to create a little bit of confidence there. But when I I landed, I I was on top of the world. Two weeks into uh, my journey here, I... um, the honeymoon period ended. And I, I was like, Oh, no, Patricia, what have you done? You quit your job. You don't know how you're going to support yourself beyond your savings. I think maybe you made a mistake. And here you are all alone. I think you made a mistake. And so that first year, first nine months, there was this back and forth of, Oh, yeah, I did it. I did it. Oh, but did you do the right thing? And I really had to, you know, work, uh, work on that with affirmations and meditation to really stay. This this would be a good time to jump into the tools that helped you through the journey of overcoming your fear. Let me ask the audience, have you guys gone through um, 
a situation like that when you had to make a bold decision in life and what were some of the things that helped you? Please go ahead and share in the comment section. And Patricia, why don't you go ahead and tell us uh, some of the tools that helped you? Yes, yeah, so in in making this move and in, in, in evolving into the person who I am today who is much more confident, much more even killed and calm when I do you know, face challenges, I really had to look back to things that I had done that I was not sure that I could do. Like when I did not pass the economics comp exam and when I retook it and was able to graduate with an economics degree, that was something that was buried in my past. I didn't believe that I could do it, I did it. And that gave me strength. So when I, when I face this self-doubt or this questioning, will I be able to do this? Am I strong enough to do this? I look back to past accomplishments and it's a really powerful tool. I, I think that even if you do, you know, a daily wins, you know, write down three things, they don't have to be huge that you have done for that day, that starts to build that confidence because you, we do so much, we accomplish so much and we just keep moving on by, we don't stop and we don't celebrate. And that helps to build your belief in yourself. So last time in our special, I talked about a similar technique. I call it grateful achievement. Mm -hmm. And so you make the list of all the things that you have been able to achieve with, with a gratitude spin on it. Mm -hmm. So, yes. you know, I come from a culture where, you know, talking about your achievement is considered like negative. And so, but gratitude is a high uh, virtue and it, it is a power in drawing on to, okay, you were simple things like, you know, you were able to pass the high school, you were able to learn to drive, you were able to learn to do simple calculations, you know, simple things. We sometimes take it for granted, but if we make a list of all the simple achievements that we have had in life, then we can feel confident about the things that we want to achieve. Yeah, absolutely. So, so I like that. Wonderful. So what's the third tool that you were, you use to help you? Shifting perspective. Now, this is a hard one to do because we, what we believe is what we believe and we can't see, sometimes see another way to see things. But when we get into a situation where, and that it may be negative, when we are able to ask ourselves a question that is the opposite of what we believe, that gives us the ability to see where, where we may not be seeing something correctly. I Can think, you give us an example? So. Yeah, and, and I, I wanna add this piece here. So a lot of times we are faced with a situation, we don't feel like we have any options, right? I, I can't do anything about this. And when we think that, our perspective is pretty narrow. But there are always options. There are always options. And so by saying, when you hear yourself saying, oh, well, there's nothing I can do. I have no options. That's a trigger for you to say, wait a minute, what are my options here truly? And, and in that way, you can help to open up and think about what other alternatives there are that you aren't thinking about because you your your perspective is narrow. So that's one of the things I think that has helped me to be resilient and to be able to sustain myself over three years abroad is that when it looks like there are no options, I get creative and I think about, oh, I could do this or I could do that. And then that kind of helps to calm me and then I can move forward from there, uh, making a decision ba based on what would be best for me. I remember the last time when I interviewed you, you were visiting mm -hmm. from France and then the COVID hit and oh. the flights were canceled and you mm -hmm. were stuck. And, and yet you still found ways of creatively dealing with it with the laughing yoga. I remember that. <laughs> yeah. Yes, because I was so stressed and I had taken this course to become a facilitator. And I thought, oh my gosh, I got I to gotta release some of this stress. And so I did that with a, a few friends and then you, you had me on your program. So yeah, 
<laughs> yeah, that laughing yoga really helps a lot of uh, people, including my patients, to kind of help lighten up the load and mm -hmm. kind of bring in more oxygen in the body and kind of get going. It kind of helps you open up your perspective. You're able to think through because when you're stuck in the problem and you're, you're only focusing on the problem, then you can't think of the solution. So you need to kind of open up to be able to start thinking creative solutions. Yes. And I think that consistent, if you do laughter yoga consistently, I think that helps you to be more creative just in general. So then you're not telling yourself there are no options. You can see more options and your perspective gets shifted. <laughs> mm -hmm. So you still do laughing yoga? I do. I, I don't do it daily. I had, was doing it daily during the beginning of the pandemic. Now I still have three friends who are in the U.S. who join me every um, Wednesday, Wednesday at noon or 11.45 a.m. Eastern time to, to do 10 minutes. And um, they look forward to it. I look forward to it. <laughs> That's wonderful. That's wonderful. So tell me about your book, That Growing Bold. That yeah, Growing of Bold some, yeah. Yeah, is a book I wrote a few years ago. It's a, it's incredible. The time is passing, but I had a goal to write a book um, back in 2015. I didn't know what it was going to be about, but when I went to France the second time to scope out a place to live, that's when the idea hit me. I was in Lyon, France. I was traveling all by myself and I was dozing, right? And I had this question come up to me, as I was thinking about what I was doing, traveling across France to four different cities all by myself. And I was kind of looking at myself saying, who is that person? What, how, is, how can she do that? That is really pretty <laughs> daring. And I asked myself, what's happening to me? And I heard loudly and clearly, you are growing bold. And so I sat bolt upright in bed and I wrote that down. I said, that's the title of my book. And I set out to write it. And I wanted to find out what had transpired in my life that was allowing me to do these bold things. And so in doing that and looking back at my life and the stories of my life, I uncovered those three catalysts, setting a meaningful goal, building self-confidence and shifting perspective as the keys that helped me to get to where I am today. That's wonderful. And uh, thank you for sharing the the chapter from, from the book, the gift that the audience can get. If you guys want to get a chapter from her book, Growing Bold, you can either, again, send the word joyful to 38470 or join the Facebook group, Happy and Healthy Mind with Dr. Rosina. And so coming back, you know, after you wrote the book, you started a podcast called Discovering Courage podcast, right? Or was right. it before? No, it was after. So this, this came about in my first year in France. I had been a guest on a podcast and I really liked the, the exchange we had. And I thought to myself, I, I think I could do that. I'd like to, you know, have conversations with people and, and, and broadcast them. And so a couple of days after that, I got, I heard another voice basically say, start a podcast. And so three or four months after that, in June of 2018, I started a podcast. I wasn't working. By that point in time, I realized I didn't want to get a job. I knew that I wanted to build my business, but the podcast was really more of a hobby for me. And I would, I yeah, started out by interviewing people who had been bold and had were doing courageous things because I wanted to pick their brains and find out how they were able to do it. And also to help inspire others who may have dreams in their hearts, but who, you know, may be afraid to do them, to get them to think a little bit differently about how, what they could do to move one step closer to doing that. And so that's, that, that's the, how Discovering Courage came to be. And that's how I got to meet you because uh, you interviewed me on your podcast. Yes. That's how you met first time. So thank you. I think like, you know, uh, people can really draw inspiration from your story, but not everybody is going to be able to move to another country or, or even have the desire to do that. So how can they apply these principles in their lives so that they are making courageous decision and not letting go of opportunities in life? Well, yeah. So the principles are, you know, will work for whatever it is that you are looking to achieve. You know, the first, 
the first catalyst is setting a meaningful goal. So that goal needs to be important to you. The goal doesn't necessarily have to even be that big. So in the, the, the free chapter that I am gifting everyone is called The Bold Life. And so I share part of my story, but at the end of that chapter, I kind of ask questions to help you think through what goal, big or small, that you want to undertake that will help you to feel more fulfilled in your life. And so using, you know, setting a meaningful goal needs to be something that is important to you. But then also when you look back to your past past accomplishments, you know, those things will bolster you so that you can help to work toward that goal. They all, these, these all work in conjunction with each other. And then as you start to take steps to work toward your goal, you'll start to see new things because you're not standing still anymore. And so your perspective changes because you're moving forward and you're, you're seeing new options and, and opportunities. So and, it's- And new obstacles would also come. New obstacles, exactly, <laughs> right? New obstacles that have options, right? <laughs> right, right. Yeah, sometimes it is hard to think about the options when you are stuck in the situation. So do you have any suggestion of how to look for those options? Well, I think there are a number of ways that you can look for options. So one way you can do that is if you know somebody who has gone through a similar situation, right? And you can say, hey, you know, I know that you recently did X or experienced Y. Um, what were some of the things that you did to, in order to make it through? Uh, what were, you know, what were some of the things you considered doing so that you're not necessarily, you know, in a vacuum trying to figure it out all alone? But I think that is one helpful way to do it. I think another way to do it is, I really believe in the power of, I don't know, intuition. And so at nighttime, if you when you before you go to bed, if you're struggling with a situation and you're not sure what which way to go, ask yourself before you go to bed. Uh, when I wake up in the morning, I would like to have some some direction on what steps I should take or could take, and go to sleep on that, and wake up in the morning and see what comes to you. Now, this may may work the first time; it might not. But it's something that if you do over and over again, your subconscious mind will start to work for you. Yeah, I, I've had this experience multiple times in my life and I'm stuck with the decision. I pose the question before going to sleep. And then in the morning when I'm doing journaling, I will kind of let it free flow. And many times I get the solutions or answers in my writing. And yeah. so I think that inner self kind of comes up. Sometimes I even kind of ask, I'm, I'm very spiritual, but like, you know, so if you're spiritual, I would say, okay, just ask your higher power to show you some signs, to give you some signals. Mm -hmm. And so I've had major decisions in life when I said, okay, these are the pros, these are the cons. I'm not sure what to do. Please guide me. And so then if I get a, a sign or a symbol, then I, I feel like, you know, this is the decision that would be in my best interest. Yeah. So that's a wonderful tool. So tell me what would happen if people don't overcome their fear and live the life of fear? Well, you know, I this subject is so near and dear to my heart because you know, I saw my, my, my father and mother passed. And so, and I don't feel that they were truly fulfilled with their lives. I feel like they accomplished so much, but I don't feel like they were happy. And that really saddened me. And so I do what I do because I don't want anybody to get to the end of their life having regrets about what they wish they had done, but were too afraid to do. And so if people don't take steps to step out of their comfort zone and work toward doing what is most important to them, even though it scares them, they can get to a place where they have not fulfilled their dreams, where they have regrets about what they haven't done. And it, that, is, that is not a happy place to be. Wonderful. Yeah. So before I ask you for your uh, take home message, I just want to give the teaser that I'm going to share a technique to help with this in my special right after you finish. So do you have a take home message that you'd like to give to the audience today? Yeah, I want to leave listeners with the idea that when we are stuck, when we don't know which way to go, when we and we are paralyzed by that, we 
can't see a path forward. And this goes to that perspective piece. And so my message is to take a small step forward. Even if you're not sure that it's the right thing to do, take that step because in taking that step, you will see other options, other opportunities, other paths for you to pursue your dreams. Wonderful. Thank you so much. And so uh, it's time for the special. And today's special is for those times when you are trying to make a decision and fear is interfering in your ability to make decision. And so I call uh, this technique opportunity cost. And if you are able to apply that concept, it would be easier for you to engage your wise mind and you'll be able to make a better decision that you feel content about. Would you like to learn that? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All, right. <laughs> All right. So now opportunity cost is a concept in, in economics where let's say if you have a uh, hundred dollars, Okay. You have an option of buying, you know, set of groceries, or you have an option of buying a really nice dress or some other thing that you wanted to buy. So let's use the example of buying the dress versus the bag, uh, groceries. So if you buy the dress with that hundred dollars, your dress is not only costing you just that hundred dollars. It is also costing you the opportunity to buy those groceries, right? So that is called opportunity cost. So whenever you are choosing what not the other decision choices, when you are faced with a decision, it's not only costing you what you're putting in, but it is also costing you the opportunity of the other option. So whenever you are faced with a, a decision, let's say a lot of people right now are facing the decision, do, do they want to get the vaccine, COVID vaccine or not? Well, they've heard, oh, okay, so people get tired, people get flu-like symptoms, which I am doing right now. <laughs> I had my vaccine yesterday and I have been pretty sick for um, for a day, uh, almost a second day now. And so, so there's, you hear about that, okay, there would be some side effect from the vaccine. And so a lot of people are scared. So now you have a choice to get the vaccine or not to get the vaccine, right? So number, if you take the vaccine, you have the risk of having the side effect, but you also have benefit of protection from the COVID. So you have to see what is, if the benefit is more than the side effect, then you want to choose option. And if the side effect is more than the benefit, then you don't. So although there is side effect of feeling sick for a day or two, it is much better than getting COVID itself or dying from COVID, right? And so for me, the decision was easy to decide, okay, well, yes, I think there's going to be complication, but the complication compared to actually having COVID is much better choice or lesser of an evil. When you have a, two options, think about many times, many times people get afraid that they're going to have negative side effect or they're going to fail in whatever choice they are making. And a lot of times when you are making the choice based on the fear, your mind is totally focused on what if I fail? Let's see if you ask the question, what if I succeed? Mm -hmm because there's an equal chance, right? So next time when you are afraid of making a decision, think about opportunity cost, okay? Because if you are not taking that choice, you are it is costing you the opportunity of getting doing something. So in your situation, um, if you would not have taken this bold step, it would have costed the opportunity of living this happy life, right? Mm -hmm. You want to see the benefit and risk, if the benefit is more than the risk, and then ask, your, ask yourself this question, what if you succeed? Mm -hmm. So on that note, um, stay happy and healthy and see you next time.